All right, so this project is all about putting your creature into the landscape in a way that's believable. And something that's hard for, for digital artists when they've created creatures is to then willfully obscure their creature, right? To, to burn its shadows enough to like take out some of the textures, to hide the feet completely, to burn this tail down so it's just a dark shape. So let me kind of show you with burning how you can force yourself to do that. So we first did it with this non-destructive overlay layer in gray, right? Now what I can do, especially in the areas that are really colorful, like the jaw, is I can just grab the chunk of that from the creature and then duplicate it onto a new layer that I set to normal mode while this one stays on overlay. And so I'll get this gray chunk there. But what's nice about that is then I can play with opacity and with levels, image adjustment levels, to just darken that shadow without bringing up the intensity on the color of those scales. So let's say I want it at that level. Now I'm just going to use my eraser. Again, nice and big, 0% hardness, lower opacity. Actually, 100% opacity first because I want to get rid of those hard edges. Pressure sensitive. So even though I have this huge brush with my tablet, I can really control it. And now I can take that opacity down. And you really can't see it until you have the option of how dark you actually need to make it to match the lighting of the scene. And all of that was just burning. I haven't done any dodging yet. So now I've got the shadow underneath my creature and on the underside of my creature. And I might even decide I want to burn a little bit more underwater for my creature. So lots of this lighting control, just depending on your environment, can be done. I'm just going to delete these layers that I don't want. This is all a lot of asking a lot of uh, processing from the computer. Okay, next, I can dodge some of these things. So I can use these same layers and I can create some limited highlights. So dodging looks like a black lollipop. I use it pressure sensitive with a tablet. I use it at an exposure of less than 20. I use it large and incredibly soft. And I'm going to do it just in the midtones. And whether I'm doing it on a duplicate of my creature layer, just kind of softening the light coming around these wings, or whether I'm doing it on an overlay layer, it should have a similar effect. so you can really control lighting. And you can always see in your history if you think it was helpful. Right? And you can always use opacity to kind of blend those in. So I might take the opacity down on this one just a little bit. So now, 
I feel like I have the, the angle of the anatomy correct, and I have the lighting on the creature pretty correct. If anything, I can use my base layer and I can rasterize it. Actually, you don't even need to rasterize it and just do direct adjustments to it. So image, adjustments, levels. This is underneath all the dodging and burning layers, but I can brighten it, I can darken it. Just going to be slight. I can limit the highlights. I can limit the shadows. Whatever you think it needs. So that it fits believably in the scene. Then I can play with the color balance, just of that base layer. Okay. In shadows, I'm going to push the shadows a little bit more towards the cyans, towards the blues. In the highlights, I'm going to push a little bit towards the warms. The midtones, let's see, a little towards the cyan. And then you can always check if that has helped in your history. And I think it does. Now, those are the kind of things that our texture overlays were doing before. But now we can make it all work just with our color balance and our levels. And what's nice is when you do it on a smart object, it calls them smart filters. So they can individually be turned on and off. You can kind of see what they do. It just takes quite a bit of processing on PhotoP's part. So I'm going to save it at that point. And then we had this composited in texture of the water, you know, on top that I have at 58% opacity. I can also dodge and burn that. So I'm going to just dodge the highlights very lightly just to get some of that contrast. It'll also make it look more like this creature is troubling the water as it walks through it. Now, this is water. This is my creature. There is light behind it. This is a scenario because the water is not that, that active where I would expect to have some sort of reflection, not just a shadow. So this gets a little bit more complicated, but this is how we do it. I'm going to select. I'm going to save everything and then reload it. <laughs> Make sure I don't have anything extra open I don't need. But I'm going to select all my creature layers move them into a group right? and then duplicate that group and then I'm going to merge that group by right clicking on it and say merge layers in that group so I have just a merged copy of my creature with all that dodging and burning and all that good stuff okay now on that copy I'm gonna move a guide down to the surface of the water is right there okay then I'm going to select everything up to that guide and then duplicate that command J so that will cut out that creature then I can delete the the merged layer Good time to save it and maybe reload it. I'm pushing my luck here a little bit. I'm going to clear its history. Okay. I'm going to open up PhotoP again. And then drag in my new one. Okay, so now with this copy, I'm going to say Option Command T. This is to make a reflection. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. Nope, wrong. I'm going to flip it vertically. 
I'm thinking in terms of Illustrator. And then I'm going to hold down Shift to lock its axis and move it down to that guide. So there is going to be some reflection, but it's going to be an exact reflection of what you see. And it doesn't need to go beyond the, uh, the landscape. So I'm going to use my eraser. 100% opacity, large, soft, and erase it away from these rocks, right? And now I'm going to go to a much lower opacity, and as that reflection gets pulled away from, from my creature, just like a shadow, it's going to get softer and softer. So I hit it with low opacity, go a lot lower here, and just take away a little bit. And then the other thing is this isn't a perfectly smooth water surface. This is a troubled water surface. So I'm going to use this other tool, which is going to soften and push and pull the image a little bit. It's called the smudge tool. I'm going to save my changes first. And the smudge tool you're going to find right above dodge and burn in the drawer. Same thing, going to make it pressure sensitive, going to make it large, going to make it 0% hardness. And the strength I'm actually going to leave at 50 just so you can see what it does. It just pushes the image back and forth. And actually, I don't like the reflection so much on the water where it's covering up the foot because I really like the detail of the foot. And unfortunately, the thigh is, is kind of smudging that directly. So we're going to make the water really troubled there and kind of push the reflection to go with that. So... Reflection in the water, achieved. And just kind of erase it away where you don't want it so much. Because that's just how it works. Even if it's just little hints of color from your creature being reflected, that is helpful to the believability. All right, what's next? Now it's really just about atmosphere. Like I've got the, the shadows on the environment itself. I've got the shadows on the creature itself. Got the reflection. I've got the water composited, but I want to play with the opacity of that maybe a little bit more. It's at 58%, but if I want that water to be a little clearer, can always take that down. Forty six there. All right. And you can see the reflection here of that column. You can see the reflection here of these elements. So it makes sense to have a little bit of a reflection from the ankles going down in the deeper water. Now save my work. All of this fine tuning takes a lot of effort, right? I could even merge this folder if I'm pretty happy with my lighting so that it doesn't have to remember all those different layers. So now it's just all in one layer. And now time to play with atmosphere again. And it should just go on top of everything. And this kind of fog overlay. And it's it's really overdone. So what I'm going to do is use a low opacity eraser. Pressure sensitive. Really large. I mean really large. Let's do a thousand pixels. And then just start sweeping this away. A 
especially erasing it away.